right, so the second free response question for unit three is a calculator question. And it's similar to the one we just did. The beginning, we're given um, a twice differentiable function of, and that's called f, and its first derivative f prime for selected values of x. We use f um, to represent a new function, which is g, and then we're asked to find g prime of 3. So we'll start with g prime of x using the chain rule. So um, it would be f prime and leave the inside alone, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. All right, and then we'll just take three and put it in for all of our x's. Simplifying it down, um, f prime of 6, we go to 6. We from our table, we can get that that is 4. If you want your calculator, you can use it. Like I said, I don't think you guys need it, but you might as well check yourself. Now, even though this is a calculator question, you, you're, you get a point for this 20, but you do have to show your work. Um, so you get one point for finding the derivative using the chain rule, one point for getting 20, but you won't get that point if you don't show what you did. All right, and then for B, we have some information about the second derivative of G, that is G prime of zero, sorry, G double prime of zero is negative one. We're gonna use that to figure out um, F double prime of zero. So I'm going to go back and just write down my first derivative again so I can see it. All right, and then I'm going to find the derivative of this. And so this one is a little more challenging because we are going to still have to use a chain rule dealing with this part. And then because this is a product, we're going to have to use the product rule. So we can do this. So for the product rule, I'm going to leave the first factor alone and multiply by the derivative of the second and then plus leave the second one alone, multiply it by the derivative of the first. So I'll take this. I want to find the derivative of the first derivative. It's the second derivative. Leave the inside alone, multiply by the derivative of the inside. And yeah, we definitely can do things to simplify that down, but I am not going to because I might make a mistake. So you get a point or you get two points right there for just for writing that and stopping. All right. And then I can plug in zero. So zero minus zero. So this would be zero minus one. zero minus one again. Okay, f prime of zero, I can get from the table that that is two. All right, negative one times negative one is positive one. And then f double prime of zero is what I'm looking for. And then g double prime of zero, we were told is negative one. All right, and then we have a pretty simple equation we just need to solve for f double prime of zero. Okay, for C, um, this is, is there a value C? for c between 0 and 3, such that g of c equals 5. So when you see that, when you see those words, I want you automatically to think intermediate value theorem every time. And when we do intermediate value theorem, we have to basically, I guess, do three things. First, we have to 
make sure and justify, verify that G is continuous. So we know things about F for sure. Um, so F is a twice differentiable function. Therefore, f is continuous. But f is not what this problem is about. This problem is about g. So if you stop right there, you haven't done enough. Um, so g is f of x squared minus x. So x squared minus x is a parabola, a quadratic function, and their quadratic functions are always continuous. So we do, we have to make a statement about G or we won't get our point. So G is continuous as the composition of continuous functions. I think we've dealt with this before and just kind of said together yeah, they're continuous, but we need to write that out. So if you have a composition of continuous functions, you have a continuous function. If you have the sum product of continuous or difference of continuous functions, you have continuous functions. All right, the other things, uh, thing we have to do is use our endpoints of our interval and find g of zero. So that's going to be f of 0 squared minus 0, or f of 0. And we can get that from the table, f of 0 is 4. Alright, and then g of 3 is f of 3 squared minus 3, or f of 6. And f of 6 is 7. All right, and then we would need to make sure that we let the our test reader know that 5 falls in between those two values. All right, and then we need to make sure we mention the intermediate value theorem. And then we want to use their words. So is there a value of C, blah, blah, blah. So we're just going to change that. There is a value of C, blah, blah, blah. I feel like you guys are getting good practice on the intermediate value theorem. I really hope they put one of those on the test. Um, so this last one, it's another one where we're trying to figure out if or when the instantaneous rate of change of one function equals the average rate of change of another function. Um, and then this one's a, calc a calculator question, which makes it a little easier to do. Um, So we have our average rate of change of f is that slope formula. We're going from 0 to 3, negative 3. Looks like we're going to get 3 um, for h prime of 
Oh, we want to figure out. We, okay, sorry. They already gave us the derivative. So we want to figure out when that derivative, the instantaneous rate of change, is equal to 3. So, um, again, it's just using the calculator. So for y1, you would put in, it doesn't matter, whichever one you want to. And then for y2, you'd put in the other one and find where they cross on that um, interval from negative 3 to 3. So h prime of x equals 3 on the interval from negative 3 to 3 when x is equal to negative 1.863. Now if you truncated it, you would have a 2. So 2 or 3 there at the end is fine. Alright, and then we can write a little statement just to make sure we've answered the question. So the instantaneous rate of change of h equals the average rate of change of f over the interval from negative 3 to 0 at x equals negative 1.863 or negative 1.862. It doesn't matter. They don't care if 